Hello guys, in this video we are going to configure OSPF and this is for the new CCNA XM 200-301 uh, where you need to configure OSPF and verify OSPF. So we are going to just configure these three routers with OSPF with just one um, with one area which is going to be area zero and these three devices are going to be doing us are going to be <clears throat> uh, doing OSPF and there are a couple of rules that you need to follow uh, the first one is the both interfaces should be in the same area um, so they're all going to be in area zero so that's good both interfaces should be in the same segment they are going to be in the same segment both interfaces should be uh, should have the same subnet mask so that they need to be in the same network and the hello and dead intervals need to match as well and the defaults hello interval is 10 seconds for OSPF and the dead intervals for OSPF is 40 the default one is 40 so if you don't change anything with the hello and the dead intervals um, they should be able to form a neighbor um, adjacency right and also OSPF is a dynamic routing protocol um, just like ERGRP. ERGRP is only uh, for Cisco devices I believe now um, it is a open dynamic routing protocol so any uh, any router from any company uh, are able to use EIGRP but now a lot of people use EIGRP uh, most companies do OSPF so let's go ahead and start with this configuration the first thing that I need to do is plug in this um, three routers so gigabit 00, zero gigabit 00, zero for this one this one's going to have gigabit 01 and then gigabit 01 over here all right so the first one that I want to configure is going to be this router and I'm using Packet Tracer uh, which is a free software that you can get uh, from Cisco or NetCAD Academy. So uh, we are going to say no for that. Enable, we are going to go to config T uh, and this from config T is where you are able to uh, modify this router and configure or do any configuration. Uh, the first command that I want to do is a host name. I want to um, give it the host name of R2 which is what I name it over here so we don't get confused or anything like that so R2 there we go so now we are going to go into interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0 which is where my interface is and after we do that uh, we, I want to configure the IP address for it uh, which is 20.1.1.2 it's going to be slash 30 so 255.255.255.252 and then we do a no shutdown great uh, so we are done with that configuration now we are going to go into router one and in router one we need to configure uh, interface uh, gigabit zero one oh zero zero or zero slash zero slash zero and then gigabit zero slash zero slash one which is this one the one in 30 that one the one the one so let's go ahead and do that say no enable config t we are going to give it a host name of r1 over here we need to go into interface gigabit zero slash zero slash zero which is um, this side right here also let's just go ahead and, conf and add those interfaces so you can um, so you can see it so I don't need to keep pointing at them or if I forget to point at them you know where we are all right so zero slash zero slash zero it's going to be for this router too it needs to be like I said in the same in the same network segment, in the same subnet mask, uh, and in the same area. Uh, so IP address is going to be 20, that one, that one, that one, slash 30, which is 255.255.252. And then we give it a no shutdown. And after the no shutdown, now the interface comes live. And if you want to ping that interface, you can do, uh, p do ping 20, that one, that one, that two. And we should be able to ping. Uh, router 2 over here. There we go. We are able to pin router 2. That is great. So now let's go and configure gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1 with the IP address of 30.1.1.1 that one, that one, that one. 245.245.245.242. Let's give it a no shutdown. Alright, so we have configured router 1 is done. We configure interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0 and now we are going to and, and we also configure gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1. Now let's go ahead and go into router 3 which is the last one. And over here we say no. Enable uh, config T. Let's give it a host name of R3. Let's go into interface gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1. 
which is the one connected to router one. IP address is going to be 30.1.1.2. 2.5.2.5.2.5.2.2. .2 .2 they need to be in the same network. Now shut down. Now we should be able to ping to verify connectivity. Ping 30.1.1.1, which is router one. Great, so we are able to ping router one. Are we able to ping 20.1.1.2 though? Let's go ahead and do a do ping ping 20.1.1.2. And as you can see, we are unable to ping this um, router two right now because we don't know how to get to 20.1.1.2. And that's why we need to configure a um, dynamic router protocol like OSPF. So if you go into the if you're going to show IP route, you're going to see that we don't have a route to 20.1.1.1 or to this 20 no network. Therefore, we won't be able to ping this router right here, and this router too won't be able to ping this 30 network right here. Uh, so that's why we want to configure a dynamic routing protocol like OSPF. Uh, so we can start with router 3. We want to go into config T. The way that you configure OSPF um, is by doing a router OSPF from the config mode. And after that, you need to provide it with a process ID. The process ID does not need to match. You can give it any number for every single one of the router. Uh, it doesn't matter what number it is. So we are going to give this one. Um, since it's router three, we are going to keep the number three. Right, so then we are going to go and add my network. Uh, the network that I want to add is 30.1.1.1 or 30.1.1.0. And we need to add a wildcard mask for OSPF. It is not a subnet mask, 255 or two. It's actually not 255, it is going to be three. So it is the opposite of the subnet mask uh, that we added. So it is only three. And then what we want to do over here, we want to provide it with an area. Um, and like I said, it needs to be in the same area uh, for the both interfaces. So it's going to be area zero. So this one does need to match. Now we are going to go into router one any router one now we need to go ahead and configure router ospf um, and the process id does not need to match like i said so therefore for this one i'm just going to give ospf one now the network needs to be 30 that one that one that zero that three and the area does need to match so area zero and this um, it takes a couple seconds but it is going to form a neighbor relationship with router three um, so let's just give it a couple seconds. Oh, we can just go ahead and fast forward in here. And the, you can see right here, um, OSPF5 um, adjacency with process ID 1, and the neighbor is 30.1.1.2. And that, that is the uh, the neighbor ID. So it is 30.1.1.2. So you can see that we have formed a neighbor relationship with router 3. And you can see that it is coming from gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1. And it is loading to full and loading done. So now if you want to see that neighbor relationship, what you can do is you can do a show IP OSPF neighbor, and you can see that neighbor relationship. Let's go ahead and make this bigger, uh, a little bit bigger. There we go. You can see the neighbor ID. You can see the priority. You can see the state is full and it is a designator router. You can see the dead time and the IP address um, where it is configured. And you can see the interface where it is coming from, which is gigabit zero slash zero slash one. All right, so that's great. So now uh, we are going to stay in router one. We are going to config T. We need to go back now into router. Or actually, let's go ahead and take a look at the show IP OSPF. Uh, or just show IP route. And you can see that we haven't really learned anything because that network is directly connected and I know how to get uh, to that network. So let's go ahead and go back to config T. And what I want to do is I want to configure an interface loopback address, um, loopback one. Uh, I'm going to give it an IP address of one 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 because what I want to do is I just want to mimic a network, so we can add routes to the routing table. There we go. Um, let's just give it a shutdown. Now we are going to exit. Then we are going to go into router, OSPF, price ID, um, one, a network. We are going to add one, the one, the one, the one, and we need to add it to the same area zero. And before I do that, let's go ahead and go into router three, so you guys can see. 
if you go and do a show IP OSPF neighbor you are going to see the neighbor 30.1.1.1 that one, that one, that one, which is router 1 uh, full and it is um, a BDR you can see the dead time and you can see the IP address 30.1.1.1 that one, that one, that one. it is coming from gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1 great alright so if we do a show IP route you're going to see that we don't have any routes because we haven't learned anything we haven't learned this network and we haven't learned the loopback address from router 1 because we haven't pressed enter right here so if we press enter right here and if we go into router 3 and if we do a show IP route um, you can see now that that network it has been learned via O O means uh, O means OSPF so as you can see right here we have learned that route so that's how you are able to uh, learn routes with OSPF so now for router 3 I should be able to pin 1.1.1.1 there we go uh, great so we can also do something similar with router 3 and a loopback I'm, I'm just configuring a loopback so I can mimic a network um, so I just want to go to interface um, loopback I'm going to say 3 IP address uh, 3.3.3.3 now let's go ahead and go to router OSPF 3 and let's go ahead and add it to the network um, network 3.3.3.3 area 0 so if we go into router 1 before we enter that command and if you go to show IP route we are not going to have a route any routes um, via OSPF but if we enter that and we advertise that telling um, router 1 that we do have a network 3.3.3.3 and if you go into router 1 we should see that network now there we go 3.3.3.3 via gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 1 so now we should be able to ping 3.3.3.3 uh, which is that loopback address and there we go so that is great now let's go ahead and we shall configure router 2 and router 2 we are going to first configure a loopback address of 2 you're going to give an IP address of 2.2.2.2 2.2.2.2 2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.2.
3 and one for router 1. This is a full DR, full DR IP address and the IP address for this one, as you can see. So that's how you configure OSPF, the dynamic routing protocol OSPF for the CCNA, uh, for the new CCNA exam that just came out February 24th, CCNA um, 200-301. Thank you guys for watching. And if you guys enjoyed this video, guys, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to my channel while you're at it. And subscribe to my channel and go ahead and watch all the videos that I have. I have over 300 videos uh, of CCNA topics. I also have CCNA security topics, uh, CCNA security, which was retired, but it is it has a lot of stuff in there. Also for the CCMP security and for the Palo Alto Networks Firewall. And if you enjoy those, then you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips if you enjoy my video. Um, also, if you don't have a Twitter account, just go ahead and create a Twitter account and then follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips. Thank you guys for watching. I love you guys and I will see you on the next one.